Welcome back for session three. This is the session where we're going to be talking about prostate cancer and, and other things to deal with prostate cancer. I have as my guest for this, this session and the next session, Jim Gregory. Jim, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Tom. Okay. Al, one of the things I want to talk about before I turn a lot of this over to Jim, Jim is our expert on prostate cancer remedies and, and some of the procedures and things like that. He's not a medical doctor, so he's not going to give any medical advice. However, he can tell you from experience some of the things that happen when you have prostate cancer. Or if you think you have prostate cancer, <coughs> or if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, those are some things that, that come into play. But one of the big things he's going to talk about later is a new blood test that's coming up. And I want to talk about that because on April 23rd, at the Nugget, we're going to have a program to talk about this. I'm going to say it's something uh, revolutionary. It's a revolutionary blood test that may take the place of the biopsy, but Jim's going to go into that in more detail. So it's on Saturday, April 23rd at 2 p.m. at the Pahrump Nugget up in the meeting rooms. So we want you to go ahead and put that on your calendar. We don't want you to miss that. Uh, when we had the people come out uh, at one of our meetings, one of our monthly meetings, uh, we, we, we almost filled the room, the small classroom where we meet. And a lot of people wanted more information on that. That's why we're opening it up to the community, the entire community, to come out April 23rd, Pahrump Nugget, at 1 p.m. And then you'll find out more about this revolutionary blood test that Jim's going to talk about in just a few minutes. But Jim, let's talk about, uh, before we get into anything else, I've already said that you're an expert on this, so how about giving us some of your background for those people that have not heard it, maybe don't know you, and I can't imagine many people don't know Jim Gregory. You know, he's, he's great in our town. So everybody should know Jim Notorious. Gregory. Notorious. And, and from this day forward, you'll know that name. But Jim Gregory can, can give us, I want him to give us his background, tell us how he came to where he is today, and just tell us about prostate cancer. Uh, uh, good morning, folks, or good afternoon, I guess it will be. Uh, you got my name, Jim Gregory. Uh, I was diagnosed briefly on my background. I was diagnosed uh, 22 years ago this fall with aggressive prostate cancer. I had a PSA of 54 and a Gleason uh, 7. And uh, they convinced me to uh, take my uh, prostate out. Uh, it came back on me and uh, uh, I think 30 months later, I went on hormone drugs. Stayed on hormone drugs for probably 18 years. Uh, and the people that have tried this stuff had to go on it. They know what I'm talking about. It's mm -hmm. really, really bad. Uh, I've had everything in the book thrown at me. Uh, I last count, my doctor said he, uh, he had kept track of my treatments and there were about 23 numbers, 23, he quit counting. So I've had oh. over 23 treatments. Uh, uh, about four or five uh, 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 clinical trials I've been in. I just finished one recently, <clears throat> nine months, and it didn't show, show any improvements after nine months, so uh, we went off of it. But I've gone on uh, chemotherapy now, and uh, I put that off until the last. But uh, uh, it's not bad. It's, it's uh, uh, side effects are not, you know, I don't get sick. My hair is not falling out. It's a mixture of two old chemos that are working much better than the, either one of the old ones. Uh, uh, that's just, uh, I'm not uh, saying that to brag about my, uh, what I've done. I'm uh, pointing out that you can survive long-term aggressive prostate cancer. And you are definitely a cancer survivor. I, I think I'm the uh, standard leader there. I don't, my doctor yes. doesn't know anybody or I don't know of anybody that's been uh, fighting it longer than I have and still standing up and getting around. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm getting awful weak lately. Uh, uh, that's enough of that. Uh, I would like to uh, go into a little bit more on detail. The last time I was on and, and uh, for the new people, 
Uh, the previous test we've had to detect prostate cancer has been the PSA. That is a blood test also. Uh, PSA stands for specific uh, uh, prostate specific antigen. And it's just a marker uh, uh, from your testicles uh, that produce this, uh, this serum that, goes, that flows through your bloodstream. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it hasn't been a good marker. Uh, a lot of uh, false uh, negatives. A lot of people have been uh, uh, aggressively treated when they shouldn't have been. Jim, Jim, let me stop you. You say a lot of false negatives. Is there also some false positives? Uh, yes, there is. There's, okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, I've, on my last clinical trial there, I, I, mine was just bouncing all over the place. And okay. We just quit even paying any attention to it. Uh, the chemo alone, uh, he, my doctor has about a dozen guys on this, and every one of them, the PSA has been drop, dropping real drastically. Now, after my first treatment, mine stopped rising, and my last treatment had dropped about uh, 20 points from uh, just over 100 down to 80. Uh, now, that's not high, folks. I, I know a doctor, or I've, I've heard of a doctor, uh, on the Pacific Coast somewhere, I don't remember where, but he had a patient of 22,000 PSA. Wow, okay. And he said he was still doing pretty good. Gee. So okay. uh, don't let the uh, PSA get uh, scare you. Uh, the uh, next thing I want to go into is... Let me back up. You say don't let the PSA scare you. It's still an indicator, correct? It is. It's still, it won't go away. Okay. Uh, although there's a lot of organizations that's recommended that uh, they don't give it anymore. It's still a tool. And up until now, it's about the only tool we have. There are several new procedures coming down the pipelines to detect uh, cancer and hopefully uh, uh, detect how aggressive they are. That's, that's the key. Okay. When, you're, when you're first diagnosed, uh, uh, how aggressive is it? Uh, are you going to die from it? Or can you watch, watch what, what they call watchful waiting? Can you just watch it, you know, uh, set up appointment with your doctor? It's between you and the doctor. And ever so often go in and get your PSA test. Establish a baseline PSA, I recommend to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I recommend it at 35 instead of 40 or 45, like a lot of people recommend. I know a, a young fellow back east uh, where I was raised that died of very aggressive prostate cancer and he only lasted about three months and he was in his mid-30s. So take that to heart. Uh, any more questions on the PSA? No, because you and I both agree that the PSA is, is a good indicator. Um, so people should get the PSA primarily just to establish that baseline right. to see if it's going up or down or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And until they come along with something better, and maybe they have, uh, uh, establish your PSA baseline. Get your PSA done once a month, or I mean uh, once a year, or maybe every two years, depending on your situation. And just uh, keep track of your doubling time. Now, the doubling time is the period of time uh, from this test to this test that your PSA doubles. That's a red flag. Uh, if it keeps, you know, a low, low left, high right on your, uh, on your uh, uh, charts there, then you need to uh, do something also. Uh, but uh, let, me, let me get into the nitty gritty of this before we start running out of time. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the Gleason score, and can you pull up the there you go. The Gleason score <coughs> is established by a, a, a biopsy. Now, uh, the biopsy, and I put this out the wrong numbers last time I was here. Biopsy is they take the worst, the worst uh, sample under a microscope like you're seeing here, and they give it a grade. And then they take the uh, second worst sample and they give it a grade from one, both of them one to five, and that gives you your uh, Gleason score from one to 10. 
Uh, I'll get into the 4K score and the, uh, where they've established the mean is for this. Uh, but you can see as the, uh, the grade two, I believe it is, at the top, uh, as you go down those grades there, you can see the difference. Your, your cancer cells start uh, getting much smaller, much more frequent. And uh, uh, the one on the left in black and white is a low score there. Uh, no, I take that back. That's that's the score one, two, three, four. I was reading it wrong. As you get into uh, worse cancer, your your cells uh, enlarge there. So that's that's how they determine the Gleason score. And they have determined that the Gleason six is the average or the norm. If you're seven, then uh, you've got problems. If you're a six, watchful waiting. Uh, six and below. Uh, there's a lot of watchful waiting that's being being done. Instead of people going and getting their biopsies and getting cut on, uh, false readings, uh, possible uh, infections, blah blah blah. Uh, they are uh, they are just using the Gleason scale there. Uh, I I need to apologize for the guy that was at our last meeting that I singled him out with the uh, Gleason nine and his urologist uh, operated on him. And to me, it's obvious that a Gleason 9 is systemic, it's already spread. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no doubt in my North American blue jacket mind about that. <clears throat> uh. Well, Jim, while you're, while you're thinking about that, I'm gonna say, I want everybody to concentrate on our next session because our next session Jim's gonna go more into detail and give you some more information about something that might be better in addition to everything you've heard already. And this is something that's gonna be pretty exciting. I want the men and the women, the men primarily because you can have prostate cancer, the women so you can keep your men safe. So you all need to look at the program we're having on the 23rd of April, the 23rd at 2 p.m. at the Pahrump Nugget, and that's going to cover a lot of the things that Jim's going to talk about in our second session. Put that on your calendar. Don't miss that. So men and women, come out and check out this program. It's a revolutionary blood test that Jim's going to talk about in our next session. So again, I hope you have that on your calendar. It's on mine. I'll be there. I want to see you there. We want to see all of you there. And come back for our, our final session where Jim is going to fill us in on a lot of information. Come back. Thank you.